uh, do you have an approach, a uh, particular approach to playing Coltrane changes? Uh, play the changes. <laughs> play the changes. Right, um, right, right. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, is there something that's sort of overarching that you're considering while playing that set of changes versus playing any other set of changes? Well, I mean, I try to, I try to, get, get past the kind of functional, um top level of the literal level of the changes of you know which a lot of which is which is uh very common to kind of just outline the triads of you know going around you know um as separate things it's kind of like what we were talking about before in terms of voice leading and and finding melodies that that are just melodies within within that framework that aren't necessarily like outlining those chords, but are existing within that framework that are seeing what I can find inside of, of things moving around and to be free in that structure so that I don't necessarily have to move when the changes move or, right. or I can move you know, depending on just what the what the feeling of of the melodic direction is, you know. Um, so I think that's where I'm at now, you know. And then, and then also like, you know, in that recording, there's just just all eighth notes, you know. Um, now I'm I'm on to to 16th notes <laughs> in my in my feeling of the of the changes you know so i'd probably be doubling that that up. i see i yeah. see you know i'm on you know, so. uh okay in, in, be honest what, you know. one other thing i wanted to ask you about uh there's a something on your sound usually and it's on this sound too it's like an effect mm -hmm. um what feels what like is that uh that is actually my voice really yeah that's my voice interacting mm. with the sound to create a kind of slightly modulated effect so you're singing the lines that you're playing the whole time yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah all right all right because i uh, i always hear because i because uh, uh, even in studio recordings um it's like i hear some uh, this a, a certain sound on on in your sound yeah. or on top of the sound and so you're yeah. just telling me that's you singing yeah yeah that's that's what happened like in in the in the beginning of of, of my career recording wise i'd go into the studio and they they would put a mic on the amp and then and then we'd we'd go into the booth and, and listen to the sound and just be like, Oh, that sounds terrible. That's doesn't sound like my sound. And little by little, my friends and I realized that, that my sound was that the, that the voice was part of the sound and that, that the experience, the experience of my sound is, is, is that the, is that the voice is, is what I'm doing live. I'm kind of like, meeting the sound with the sound of, of my singing and, and what happens in between that is where really where my sound is. So, so then I realized that I had to start recording the voice. So I started recording voice from then on. And that's what you're hearing. Man, I was hoping you could tell me that it was an effect because I was going <laughs> to cop that. Right? 
<laughs> Sing it, mate. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, I mean, I, I can sing in in pitch, uh, but yeah, I, I can't sing any any of that stuff <laughs> that you were playing there. <laughs> well, if you turn it down, you you have a little leeway, you know. <laughs> if real soft, you can get away with some slip slide, and because that's a, that's the uh, that's the point anyway. Is that you get this sort of human quality that's kind of modulating the whole thing so you know you don't have to be 100 percent accurate 